Good morning, welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Now, it's colder than a witch's wing tip in here again this morning, so I've got two hoodies on. And uh, also on the topic of hoodies, yesterday's yellow hoodie uh, seemed to have fun with the camera, so apologies for that. Right, on to today's topics. Number one is that Edge 540 was hashtag amazeballs. Unbelievable, the best model I have ever flown uh, for precision and just the feeling uh, of being locked in. So we'll have quite a bit of a discussion about the Edge 540 uh, in a moment. Uh, next topic, the clouds is on its way. Uh, there are two new flying wings being released. One of them is a little bit iffy if it's going to be released. Uh, we also have a new Tyrannus QX7, which looks absolutely fantastic. We'll take a look at that moment, and I'll pass on the video which I've got here, so you can take a look as well. And also, finally, which model won the vote for the best model for 2016? We will find out at the end of today's RC Coffee Chat. So with that said, the FMS Edge 540, wow! Un friggin' believable model. Now, let me just set the scenario for you is that yesterday was a flying day, and actually, you can see Andrew Heady 2008, uh, he's known as on YouTube there. And uh, now we have gone up with Andrew so that number one, oh, I had three models to made in I had the pink Hornet wing, I had the little Rainbow 600, which is a brilliant little wing, uh, and of course, the FMS Edge 540. And uh, we taken well. I am, to be frankly honest, I haven't flown line of sight in weeks, if not months, and I genuinely mean that. Everything which I've been flying lately has been all FPV. Uh, it's just a, such a fantastic experience. So when we got up there, I did take the Hummer 3D with me as well uh, and smashed around six batteries worth. Um, let me just make the point that I did fly that Hummer into, literally, into the ground. Uh, that was one of the batteries which ended up on, uh, oops, uh, 2%. Now that was one of those A-spec batteries, and I know it's gonna be fine. That's why I rate those A-spec batteries, because you can hammer them hard, uh, and they will recover and not puff. Uh, so anyway, yeah, took the Hummer 3D up there, and I absolutely smashed that one around the sky, and also smashed it in the ground a few times as well. Uh, just trying to get back into the, the, the feel of things, trying to get the like the hand and eye coordination going on. Uh, near the end, I was able to hold a, a decent flat knife edge uh, for a good couple of seconds. Uh, and yeah, I reckon within another couple of batteries, I would have been back to a similar skill level where I was before. Uh, so yeah, warmed up on the Hummer 3D. Uh, Andrew went out and we got his um, FVV virginity done and honestly by the I think it was by the second flight with Andrew he was going through the rugby posts uh, yeah he had it pretty much licked straight away and then we also got him up with the sky shadow as well uh, and I kind of like the, the thing is is that it's just a big open field uh, so we needed something to aim for hence why we aimed for the rugby post and also I dared Andrew to have a go at one of the bushes on the wall as well. And the thing is, is that you do need something to aim for. Uh, and then I've to think about Andrew's flights, he, he went round uh, and then the first landing was a bit rough. Uh, and then by the second and the third landings, he had it absolutely perfect. And he was bringing the models down absolutely fantastically well. So yeah, I can see Andrew flying a lot more FPV. Anyway, uh, Coming back to my point is that I flew an awful lot of line of sight yesterday, uh, just trying to get my skills, my fingers, my yeah, my thumbs back into tow uh, with what's going on in the sky. And the reason for that, I was a little bit nervous about uh, maiden in the uh, Edge 540 because it is such a beautiful, flat, beautiful plane and model. Uh, and she went off. Uh, and we had one quick lap, and that was just getting her trimmed in. Uh, the second lap around was, and I didn't need any elevator trim, it was just aileron, it was just sinking off to the left a little bit. Uh, and then brought it around for a couple of slow passes for Andrew, because he had his um, SLR there with him. 
uh, to take some photos, which there's like a little mini video uh, on Facebook if you haven't seen it yet in the Facebook group. And by the way, shameless plug, there is a link to the Facebook group uh, underneath this video in the video description. Uh, and after that, I absolutely caned it. Uh, we brought it down. Now, I'm sure many of you want to know what the flight efficiency is like. Now, after the first flight, which was four minutes or so, uh, we had 81% left in a 5,200 battery pack. Uh, and then after about a total of 13 minutes flight time, we had 44% left in the battery. And that was real mixed flying there. Uh, that was a medium throttle to mostly uh, wide open throttle. Uh, action with the model so it did really really well by the second flight I was in doing some touch and goes and again I am just checking my notes here uh, I did that is the, what you can see on your screen right now is the raw video footage from the maiden I wanted to share with that with you uh, as soon as I could uh, so that was uploaded the literally the raw footage was uploaded yesterday I've also got a Mobius on a, on a hat cam and I'll edit that up as soon as I can for you uh, and yeah unbelievably wild, uh, wow um what was got more notes in it yeah by the second fly i was doing some touch and goes now do note that grass does look like grass but i can assure you the ground was frozen rock solid so when it comes down it comes down and you're shaking on the ground uh because the ground is literally frozen solid oh and i was on form i pretty much i only had one bounce landing uh the rest were I was on my A game for landings because I had to be because I didn't want to stuff that model. Uh, what else I got on here? Now I do in my notes here. I do need more elevator in the low rates setting on my transmitter. So that's just a transmitter setting. That's really straightforward. But the one thing which was glaringly obvious is that I needed more rudder. So I tried a knife edge in, a, in both directions and. Even with me trying to like pulse the throttle and get the rudder to come out on the side, I, I just didn't have enough rudder movement in her to be able to hold uh, a knife edge. And she was just sinking all the way across the sky. And I, I was putting a lot of throttle in there as well, uh, trying to hold it. And it all boils down to the movement which I had uh, on that model uh, for, the, uh, for the rudder. So my number one task for today is to take that little... And I mean, it's just one of the little standard, tiny little uh, uh, servo horns off and put one of those big ass extended servo horns uh, on it. So I get like, literally, it's just like a door <laughs> whack around. That's the kind of movement that model needs. But with all that said, that's all just minor details. That is the most locked in precise model I have ever flown. And I've flown a lot of models. It was literally, you bang it around and you catch it and it would stay at the like the angle of incidence it's it would hold its attitude in the sky and it was just so responsive to the sticks beautiful and i i, I honestly mean this beautiful to fly and i can tell you point blank uh, you are going to see a lot more of that model up on the flight line because it was just unbelievable in the sky i genuinely do mean that uh, i know gearbest sent me to it for, for review um but honestly uh andrew will vouch for it as well it was just so locked in uh and it was just so precise it's the most precise model i have ever flown so anyway i could talk all day about the fms edge 540 brilliant model i know it's just unreal unreal so let's change topics to something else uh the clouds uh, FPV wing is on our uh, model is on its way to us. It left Singapore uh, Apparently today it 10 17 their time So it's in the air on the way to me now I am expecting that around Monday or Tuesday as a optimistic ETA for it landing past the force are absolutely fantastic uh, if I am gonna get slapped with some import duty uh, Then I'll probably find out tomorrow or maybe on Monday uh, and that's no big stress. Like I said, I, I kind of knew I might get hit with uh, import duty on this one. Uh, so frankly, I will be surprised if I don't. Uh, so and it's possible. So they're normally pretty good, and it's quite easy to pay them online, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, clouds. She's on her way. Oh, uh, now we have two new wings kicking around at the moment, and I'm not a fan of either of them. 
and that's just me speaking honestly here. Uh, I'm not, I, I, and you know how much I love flying wings, but the bit which is biting me uh, is the price point for both of these models, okay? And that, that's why I'm being hesitant on these. Now, the first one is the ready-made RC uh, Strix Altus. Okay, now I will put a link to this video in the video description underneath this episode for you so you can go and take a look and make your own informed decision. Uh, it is a fantastic model. Let's not knock it. There's obviously been some time and thought and that foam, the guy really is ramming his thumb uh, in that foam and uh, it's not denting at all. And they reckon, uh, they reckon around about 130 mile an hour for that model. Uh, that is a really, you can see the quality of the molding on that plastic uh, hood and then again that wing is specifically designed for racing it does look absolutely fantastic but price point of around get this $190 that's a lot of money uh, there's no series about it there I I've, I'm pretty sure it can take a hit let's not knock it but for the same kind of money you could have an FG36 a decent motor in there and probably have some change left over for some other components um, like an F run cam or something like that so price point is my major issue with this wing uh, it is a very niche market on there and I don't know you go make your own decision on that one and um, it is a lot of money and it is available from ready-made RC uh, $190 as a plug and play kit. So, I don't know, maybe if you're in the US and race wings are your thing, then that would be a good choice for you. That's all I'm gonna say. The other model is a mini race wing. Again, these race wings have seem to be taking up popularity, and why not? I'd Like I said, for the last, ooh, it's got to be like two, three months. That's all I've really done is FPV, literally just flat out every FPV, every single flight. And that's why I had to go up to the flight line yesterday uh, and then smash the Hummer around to almost to the point of destruction. And uh, the uh, motor prop, just gonna, like where I bent, bent the shaft so much, it's just going around in a big loop. Uh, and uh, I broke the elevator off it as well yesterday just trying to get back into line of sight. So FPV is extremely addictive and going fast is also extremely addictive. And by the way, my view uh, on FPV is that it is gaming in the real world. So I used to be a really big video gamer uh, and this is why I love this hobby so much is that it's, it's video gaming in real time, in real life. And if you do stuff it in a tree, then you've got to put your transmitter down and wander over and go and fetch it out or climb it and go and get the, uh, the model out. Uh, that's, that's why I like this hobby so much. It's it's real life, real time gaming. It's amazing. So anyway, so no wonder that um, this is a Kickstarter project kicking around. Do Again, do go and watch this episode or watch their video and make your own informed decision. There's obviously been a lot of time, effort and energy spent in the design of this model. I do like the idea of having a carbon fiber fuselage. I do think that's a very cool idea. I do think that's perhaps a touch on the old dangerous side. If I'm frankly speaking, a lump of carbon fiber at the front of a model, if that hits, God forbid, someone, then that ain't gonna bend. The other object which you hit has got to bend. Um, I do like the idea of the wings being able to fall off. I thought that was a very good idea. And I also like the thrust angle uh, for the motor on the back. I don't know if we can see it in here. Yes, there. You can move the motor forwards and backwards to get your thrust angle correct. But the reality is it's stupidly expensive. 250 euros or uh, like a minimum 194 euros. That is a lot of money for no. A lot of wing and I personally don't see that Kickstarter reaching its goal I genuinely don't see it happening uh, and the reason is very straightforward well number one let's face it, it is a fantastic um, well thought out well engineered product we cannot knock it on that point of view but the price point is just horrific there are so many better options out there uh, and you could have many many wings 
for the same amount of money uh, and if you think how many crashes you're gonna have with that one how many crashes you could have with maybe uh, another model uh, and have a spare one in your bag fully kitted up kind of you, you, the price point like I said my objection to both of these models right now is price point hopefully they do come uh, down in time right next topic is wow you've got to see this now I will put a link to this video because you do need to go and watch this video to go and appreciate um, the, the the Tyrannus QX7 I know many of you and I have seen the Flysky uh, transmitters which are excellent value for money but what to, um, what FR Sky have been and done is basic, basically make a cheaper version of the Tyrannus and the Tyrannus is I, I've seen other handsets the trans uh, the uh, the Spectrums the Futabas and things like that and in my personal humble personal opinion the Tyrannus is the most flexible transmitter that is out there on the market and that's that genuinely down uh, to the software which is being run on it. I can do anything I want and all the switches are all available to me. It's not like a spectrum where you must have the rates over here and uh, like the F uh, Fly Sky stuff, you, you, you're kind of limited in different switches. You can only have a certain amount of functions and things like that. Uh, with the Tyrannus, like the uh, 9X Plus, whatever it is, uh, I can do anything I want and I've got no restrictions in what I can do. What Tyrannus have been and done is just basically make a cheaper version of that. Uh, if that does sound like some come, by the way, the price point on this one is, uh, I do believe um, is about $105. So, and I did notice that on Gearbest, uh, that they did indicate it was gonna be about $85. So don't hold me to that one, uh, but that's what did show up in the Google search results. So yeah, it's gonna be around the 70 to 90 pounds mark, which I actually feel is fantastic and I mean genuinely mean that, fantastic value for money. The flexibility which you have in that transmitter, and I can see we can zoom out and we can have a uh, different look at it. Try and get one in focus, there we go. Uh, same kind of array of switches. We don't have the side sliders, which I only ever use on one model anyway, which is the, and I use the left one on that one to bring the flaps down uh, or turn it into um, spoiler ons to get some height off. Uh, we do have the twisty little uh, pots on the top, which again, never use, ever. So uh, no biggie for me. But these these collection of switches, we again, we are missing an extra switch here, again, comparing it directly to the Tyrannus. Uh, so we do have less switches. Apparently the gimbals are not that bad. Again, you need to, if you're interested in this one, do go and have a look at that guy's uh, episode or video on the, at the X7. Uh, and again, it's running uh, OpenTX. So all the cool stuff which I've got in my Tyrannus, you can have in the X7 uh, on literally on a budget price. And also let's put this into perspective, you can basically have two of those for the same price as my Tyrannus. So that is possibly gonna be the transmitter for 2017. In fact, I'm actually gonna go on record. I know that that is gonna be the transmitter for 2017 for the features which are packed in there for the price point. Um, I know it's almost like twice as expensive, or you know, it is twice as expensive as the Flysky stuff, but the functionality, spot on. I, I'm, 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 I know in my head that is gonna be the transmitter for 2017. So whereas the Flysky i6 was like the best transmitter of 2016 uh, for affordability and functionality, this one is just gonna blow it out of the water um, so be frankly honest, I can't wait to get my hands on one uh, because I just know it's going to be the dog's doodads. Oh, and that little wheel on the right hand side, uh, that would be super cool because like mashing the buttons around on the Tyrannus, it is kind of like second nature now for me, but the little scroll wheel would make the like user interface an awful lot better. So I will put a link to Gearbest uh, and also uh, for the Q7 and I'll also put a link to, again, to be fair to Gearbest about the... <laughs> absolutely amazing model the edge 540 uh, in the video description for you uh, so yeah oh uh, do also note that it does apparently have a plasticky plasticky feel to it which is no surprise because it is made of plastic and i'm just there looking for my cuppa 
it does mean uh, sorry it does run d8 and d16 so that's d receivers v receivers x receivers and the new sr receivers uh, will all work uh, with that x7 so yeah and also note the l9r won't work with it but on the back end well on the, i'll try and find it but on the opposite side on the back of the transmitter you do have a standard jr uh, port on the back so if you have another module maybe for 433 for example or 915 megahertz or maybe you've got one of those uh, all-in-one uh, little boards uh, for the back which you're using right now in your Tyrannus perfect um, and yeah I, I, I like I said I'm gonna go on record I'm gonna say that is gonna be the transmitter uh, for 2017 it looks absolutely fantastic and you really do uh, if, if, if that sounds like anything which you'd be interested in go and take a look at that video um i yeah I, I i have issues in recommending to anybody to buy a normal tyrannus um because of the price point it is so expensive and the same with the fat shot goggles i me and andrew had a chat yesterday on the flight night about the uh, fat shot goggles and i'm like andrew they're amazing but there's no way i can tell you that you should go and buy them for 300 pounds when there are so many other options out there and he's got some cyclops and yeah actually that's the first time i've worn the cyclops and they're, they're really light and it does lean on your nose quite a bit but for the price point you could have what three maybe four cyclops compared to a pair of fat sharks and yeah this is why i have issues at times like i i can't tell you and i can't say to you go and buy a normal tyrannus um they are they're like in my world if i broke mine i'd go and buy another one because I feel, personally feel that they are that good. But I can't recommend to you that you go and pay like the best part of 200 quid on a transmitter. The same with the fat shot goggles. I can't say that. If in the back of my head, my, I, I would question myself seriously if I recommended to you to go and buy some fat sharks because they are a premium product. And to be frankly honest, those of you which like the fat sharks would have gone on and bought the fat sharks already. Okay, they are absolutely fantastic. There's no two ways about it. But there are so many options out there. Though the Cyclops, for example, I've got the Ishin VR 007s. I paid 30 quid for them. Probably the one of the best 30 quids which I've ever spent in this entire hobby. They're brilliant. The kids just there sit there with the goggles on. They love it. Um, and I don't care about it. How many? Well, there's 10, 30. I could have 10 of those VR 007s for one pair of fat sharks. That's why I can't recommend Fat Sharks to you, um, because those of you which are going to buy Fat Sharks have probably already bought a pair. Okay, whereas something like that, coming back to my point, unbelievable value for money, unbelievable. So anyway, the last topic for today is which model won the vote of which was the best model of 2016. Now, it was actually. A close call. Now I just want to show you that I'm not fudging the results. So that is the results from the poll on yesterday's YouTube episode. So the Micro Sky Hunter had 15 votes. The Sky Shadow had 14 votes. The Excalibur had nine. And actually, rather disappointingly, um, because I, I I didn't want to try and like bias um, the reviews uh, like your votes at all. But I really did like the C1 Chaser. That for me did fit that that hole between the wing wings at 84 and the phantom fx61 and i really must get my motor mount sorted on mine because i really do need to get out and fly it because it is a fantastic model in the sky and yeah i must get mine fixed so personally speaking i love the micro sky hunter Okay, it is a brilliant model and I love darting in and around trees. It can be overpowered, it can be underpowered, you can go fast, you can go slow, you can do crazy stuff with it. It's a very good model. The Sky Shadow, tough as old boots. And uh, that with Andrew yesterday was all, oh, here's the transmitter, stick your goggles on, throw it. And I, I just don't care. Okay, and that's got a run camera all in the front uh, and that Tenergy 2K camera uh, in the front. And I don't care if he smashes it in because I know one those two components are pretty well tough because from prior uh, endurance testing, uh, um, durability testing is what the words I'm looking for, uh, it they'll hold up. 
Um, but the Sky Shadow, yeah, tough as old boots. It really is. And Andrew's actually got one and he hasn't built it yet, so we're trying to nudge him on. That's the model you want for FPV uh, because it's tough as old boots. Get your unscheduled landings out of the way uh, on a model which can really take it. Then we had the Excalibur. Again, Toothless. I've nicknamed that model Toothless. That, whoosh, so addictive. So anyway, that was the uh, poll results from YouTube yesterday. And then on Facebook, uh, we had 22 for the Reptile, uh, 12 for the Micro Sky Hunter, six, seven, and I counted that as seven, because uh, you've got one person there and the other person there. So seven for the C1 Chaser, and then five for the Excalibur. Now I've been and put that into a spreadsheet. So in last place, but I do hasten to add, that was my, one of my personal favorites of 2016 was the C1 Chaser. I do like that model a lot. And that came in with 14% of the votes. So a total of actually 13 uh, votes came in for the C1 Chaser. The Excalibur came in with 16% uh, of the votes. Now it was really close for second and first place. So in third, sorry, in second place, just like last time, do a little mini drum roll. Uh, I'm sure you probably worked out. It was the Micro Sky Hunter that came in as second place. So that means the best model of 2016 was the Sky Shadow. Absolute fantastic model, tough as old boots. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen what I've been and done with that model. Uh, and yeah, it can take a beating. It flies great, it flies inverted great. It has an awful lot of things going for it the biggest one is that it is tough as old boots that is molded epp uh, and you've seen what i did to mine and it could cope with that kind of abuse oh and you can also run a 2200 3s battery in it nuts absolute nuts so well done thank you ever so much to everybody who voted yesterday i really do appreciate you putting your vote in there it doesn't matter whether you voted for my favorite which was the c1 chaser the excalibur the micro sky hunter or the sky shadow they are all fantastic models and there's no doubt about that one but for this vote the clear winner was the sky shadow so to recap the topics which we've been through today number one the FF FMS, let's get back to that one. If you haven't seen that video, go and look it up immediately. It's amazing, uh, that model in the sky. The most precise locked-in model I have ever flown. Oh, and I did get the CFG absolutely spot on because when I had her inverted, it needed, and it was so peculiar, the tiniest, and I mean the tiniest little piece of down elevator in her just to get it to fly. She was just slowly sinking. So I must have had that CG uh, almost perfect. It was just just sinking just a tiny touch. And I did put quite a chunk of lead uh, up underneath that end. And I was running a big, you know, the big uh, multi-star 5200 4S packs. I was running one of those in there. Absolutely brilliant. Um, unbelievable model. And you will be seeing much more of that off the flight line uh, because I've not flown anything to that level of authority and responsiveness uh, in the sky before ever. It was crazy. Uh, the other topic which we had, the clouds, is now on its way. We do have those two new wings. And again, like I said, I'll put both of those wings in the, uh, all the links on which I've covered in the video description underneath here. So underneath this video episode, click on show more. There's a great big long list of everything which is covered in today's episode. Both of those wings will be in there, including the mini race wing and the Strix. Uh, we, what was it I've got on there? Um, sorry, I've got the Strix and the mini race wing, the uh, uh, Alatus, whatever they, however they pronounce it. The transmitter, which I'm going to go on record and say is going to be the transmitter for 2017, uh, the FR, sorry, the FR Sky QX7 looks like an absolutely amazing transmitter for the money. It's basically half the price of a normal Tyrannus with very, very similar features and functionality. Um, crazy stuff, and yeah, it's gonna be mad. Uh, and then which model man won? the best model of 2016 votes, and it was the Sky Shadow. So very well done, the Sky Shadow. I do feel actually it was deserved. Like I said, it's a model which is it's tough 
as old boots and maybe that's the reason why I'm not being that keen on those two models up there because I do feel that there's better value for money out there and again not specifically designed for racing but just day in day out fun there's a lot of model out there for a lot less money you make your own decision on that one so on that note for myself Matt thank you ever so much for joining me for today's RC coffee chat hmm still warm right I'm gonna go and enjoy that get this episode edited up for you by the way any comments which or questions which you have about the FMS Edge 540 or any of the other things which we've been in cover today remember you can just ask them in the comment section underneath this episode and I will also do two things number one a shameless plug for the Facebook's group uh, if you go to uh, Facebook well I'll put a link to it in the video description for you uh, that was pretty wild in there yesterday there was so many different conversations going on and it was fantastic because we were all chatting about RC uh, and the other one is that if you've not already pressed the subscribe button underneath this video uh, next to my name so you'll see me there and my little blue hat on down there so Matthew Ogborn click on subscribe and make sure you subscribe so that you catch tomorrow's episode or uh, maybe the maiden episode of the Edge 540 as soon as it's been released. And on that note, I really am going now. Have a fantastic day if you're out flying. And if you're not out flying, hey, maybe tomorrow's a flying day instead. So on that note, I'll see you again tomorrow. Cheerios!